I start it, I start it. Whoever watches the recording can laugh at me as I make sure I gotta start it. <laughs> Hello, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll be getting started at the top of the hour. We're so glad to be here with y'all today. Welcome, welcome. I'm just going to throw some intro questions up. They are entirely anonymous. If you can see them on your screen, feel free to give us uh, your answers there. We're just curious about all of you as readers. Once again, completely anonymous. All right, well, I am going to close this in just a second here. Let everyone finish answering so we can get started at 10 a.m. Let's see. All right, and I'm going to end that poll. Um, all right, very cool. It looks like we've got some interest in ebooks and audiobooks. Got a lot of mystery lovers today, Marissa, uh, but also some love for biographies. Uh, the what is that? Four genres that I have in our intro poll were actually the top checked out in 2021. And we've got some good readers here. It looks like everyone's reading for fun. And we've got some people reading for book club. Very cool. And it looks like just about everyone's using an iPad today. But of course, you can use Libby on a variety of devices. All right. Well, with that poll all done, I am going to get us started. So good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Learning Libby with the Experts webinar. This morning, we are excited to share all of the wonderful information we have for you on the library reading app Libby. We'll start off with the basics, everything you need to know for your day-to-day -day life within the Libby app. We'll take a brief break in the middle for about five minutes, where you can also test your skill taking our mini quiz. And then we'll wrap up with our deep dive where we'll look at four of our favorite tips and tricks all in Libby. Now, before we dive in, we'll probably, you know, we should probably introduce ourselves. My name is Joe and I'm here from Overdrive. Now you may have heard of the Overdrive app. You may have even used it in the past before, but we are excited to be all in with Libby and we are talking all about Libby today. Uh, so we built Libby from the ground up. Libby is created by Overdrive. It's the same collection, just a brand new face to make using uh, eBooks and audiobooks and more from your library even easier. At Overdrive, I am a part of the Digital Bookmobile team. So we have a truck that we send across the US and Canada when we're not staying safe at home uh, and helping different libraries and schools, people just like yourselves get started with Libby. I'm here with the other half of the team. Hello, good morning. My name is Marissa. As Joe said, I'm the other half of the Digital Bookmobile team. I always kind of give him a hard time and joke around that he has the boring half of our job. So he typically hangs back in Cleveland where Overdrive is headquartered and does all the desk work, all the stuff that I would never want to do. <laughs> and then I get the fun part of our job, which is traveling with our digital bookmobile to all of our libraries and helping people just like you learn how to use Libby. So in my three years at Overdrive, I've helped thousands of people learn how to use the Libby app, whether it's just getting started and signing in for the first time or helping more experienced users learn tips and tricks, which we're going to cover all of that today. So we're really excited to be here. You know, I am the behind the scenes guy. I do I do, do a lot of the boring stuff and that's actually what I have to do. Uh, right now before we dive in. Just some quick housekeeping for you. We do have closed captions enabled for the webinar. They should be appearing on your screen automatically right now, but if for some reason they aren't, or if you need to adjust those at all, just tap on the box that says CC in your Zoom meeting controls. You can adjust some settings from there. If you have questions, feel free to use the Q&A box. Also in those Zoom meeting controls, 
tap on the button that says Q&A, type out your question, and if one of us is talking or presenting, the other will be responding, so we'll get to you as soon as we can. Um, you can even ask questions anonymously if that makes you more comfortable. Now we are recording our session this morning and we do this for a variety of reasons. The main one being, so you have something you can look back at if you want to reference something we covered again, you know, if you wanna see it one more time or if for any reason you need to hop off early, it'll be great to have that recording available to you. You will get an email tomorrow morning from Zoom around this time that will include a link to the full recording that will cover from start to finish everything we're presenting right now. And you'll also receive a link to our getting started guide, which includes short video clips for everything we cover in the first half of this presentation. Now, since we've got you know, that full recording you can review, if you need to hop out early for any reason, no worries, you'll be able to review wherever you left off at um, as early as tomorrow. And then, of course, since we have all of that for you to look back at, we want you to just watch us as we go through the presentation today. Don't try to follow along, just ask your questions as they come up and try to soak that all in and know that you can always refer back to the recording uh, when you start diving in yourself. Or, of course, um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> there we go. I have my computer just blacked out there for a minute. All right, now I'm all good again. <laughs> Gotta love technology, folks. All right, uh, a survey is going to pop up on your screen when the webinar ends. Fill that out for us. Let us know what you thought of the presentation and any notes for improving in the future. And then uh, last but certainly not least, we will be connecting our iPads directly into the webinar so you can see Libby in the app format while we go. Uh, Zoom sometimes shrinks or cuts off part of the display when we do this. It doesn't happen to everyone, but if it happens to you, it just takes a few simple clicks to correct, and we'll put those instructions in the chat. If for some reason you can't see those instructions or you need them again, just pose it as a question in the Q&A and we'll respond with those steps. And now that I'm through all that boring stuff, let me take a second and get my iPad connected. All right. So as I mentioned, Marissa and I will both be using iPads this morning, but the Libby app is available for download on Apple mobile devices like your iPhones and iPads and Android mobile devices like your typical smartphones and tablets. There we go. So whether you are using something like an iPhone or an iPad, or if you are using um, Come on. Uh, any of the different Androids out there, there are so many available. You've got, um, let's see, that's not what I want. You've got Samsung's, you've got Google devices. And Marissa, it looks like for some reason, it does not want to connect. Can you have Vanna White for me? Of course, let me just reset everything really quick and I'll be <laughs> there in two seconds. Thank you. So you can only download the Libby app, like I said, on those two styles of devices. But if you want to use Libby on your computer, you can go to libbyapp.com. Doesn't matter if it's a laptop or a desktop. Doesn't matter if it's Windows or a Mac. There's nothing to download. You can just use Libby in the web browser. Now, whether you are using um, Apple, Android or a computer at libbyapp.com, everything is going to look pretty much exactly the same across all of those platforms. So there should be no confusion regardless of the device you're using. Everything will look just about exactly the same. And thank you all for your patience. Sorry for the technical difficulties here. You never know what fun is going to happen. Oh, Marissa, sorry, at, at the final moment, it looks like maybe it's available for me, but if you want to continue, go right on ahead and I will. Uh... Yeah, let's just keep it so that we don't All have right. to. All right, perfect. 
So the first thing you're going to want to do once you're all, you know, now that we're connected is we're going to go into our app store. So if you're on an Apple mobile device, you're looking for that blue app store icon. If you're on an Android, you're headed into the Google Play Store. Once you're in your app store, just head on down to that magnifying glass or your search bar. And you can just type in Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. Now, when I search for things in the App Store, I tend to ignore the suggestions that pop up, and I'll just hit search or enter on my device keyboard. Now, when I do that, Libby is going to be one of the top results to pop up, and we can see right here, Libby by Overdrive. We've got that maroon app icon with Libby reading her book. And if we go a little further on your screen, you'll see either Get or Install. From there, you can tap on get or install and that will let you download Libby. Now Libby is completely free to download and use, so there is no cost to worry about. I just recommend having your app store password handy just in case you're prompted to sign in based on your settings. But once again, Libby is completely free to download and completely free to use. Once you've got Libby all downloaded, we'll leave the app store and head over and open up that freshly downloaded Libby app on our screen. When we open Libby for the very first time, she'll have a few questions for us to help us find our library and get signed in with our library card. So we can start right there. First question, do you have a library card? And we'll say yes. And now here's where we need to find our library location. So I like to um, use search for a library and we'll tap into that in just a minute, but I wanted to give a quick shout out for any of you who plan to use Libby on multiple devices. So no matter what, the very first time you download, we'll use search for a library, but once we get all that set up, if you're gonna set up a second or a third device, you can use copy from another device when you're setting that additional device up to speed through the rest of these steps, it will pull your info over from your first device. So just keep that in your back pocket for later. But for now, let's finish our first device by tapping on search for a library. And I like this one because I can just type in my zip code. This is 46032. And there we go. We've got the top result right here. Our digital collection name is Carmel Clay Public Library. So you might see the address pop up. You might just see Carmel Clay. What you're looking for is that big bold up top. That is the name of your digital collection. We'll tap on this box to choose it. And we're almost done. I just need to send that to Marissa. There we go. And all we need to do now is add our library card. So we're gonna tap on sign in with my card. And now all you need to do is type in your library card number. You don't have any pins here. So just type in those uh, numbers as they uh, are on your card, usually gonna be under a barcode. Don't enter any dashes or spaces, just the card number only. And then tap on sign in. all the zeros. <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> I think there's seven of them. <laughs> and see, even the experts, there's no getting around uh, reading a number wrong. So just try it again. And there you go. Once you've got your number typed in correctly, you'll have a card appear here on your screen. Now we know we can check out up to 10 ebooks and audiobooks at a time, and we can place a hold on up to 10. We'll tap on next, and that will get us directly into our library's complete collection of ebooks, audiobooks, magazines, and extras. Now is when I get to fully hand it over to Marissa. She's going to take a second here and switch over to our demo library. We like to use our demo library from OverDrive just so we don't borrow anything you all might be waiting for in your collection. So you'll see a different logo at the top and some different uh, just kind of names throughout, but everything works exactly the same regardless of what library you're in. So I'm gonna hand it over to Marissa, but if you have any questions, I'll be hanging out in the Q&A. Thanks, Joe. 
Okay, so before I get started with all of the Libby basics, I just want to give one more reminder about the zoom ratio. This is really, really is important that you see my entire screen. So down at the bottom of my screen right now, you should see a navigation bar and that has five icons within it. Search, library, menu, shelf, and timeline. So if you can't see that right now, that means Zoom shrunk your ratio. And uh, Joe just put the instructions out in the chat one more time for you. And those take, it's a couple of clicks. It's really, really fast. And you'll be able to see my whole screen and follow along with me so much easier during the um, presentation today. So I just wanted to give that final reminder before we got started. And we will be talking about all of those icons that you see in the navigation bar throughout the presentation. But we're gonna go ahead and start out talking about the library. And that is the second icon within the navigation bar here. You can see it looks like a little library building and then it says library underneath. Now, this is the page we're on right now. And this is the icon you're gonna tap on when you want to browse your library's entire collection of eBooks, audiobooks, and magazines. Now, you're gonna get hit sick of hearing me say browse when I talk about the library. I say it a lot. And that is because when you think about the library icon, I want you to think about going into the physical library and browsing around the shelves. You don't know exactly what you're looking for here. You're just kind of, you know, taking a gander at what the library has displayed out on their shelves and seeing if something sparks your interest. So browse at the library. Now up at the top of our library page, we do have some filters um, that are a great place to start when you're browsing around the collection. Just added is a filter that's gonna show you books that were recently purchased by the library. They were just added to the collection and are new to the library. Available now is a really great place to go. If you want to find a book to read right away without placing a hold, you know, maybe you're going on a road trip, maybe you um, want to read something to um, some, you know, a, a child at night and you want to find something quick, that available now filter is the place to go. The last one I'll talk about here is subjects. This is probably the most popular way to look for a book. We saw we had some biography lovers and some mystery lovers in our entry poll. If you have a specific subject or genre that you like to read and you want to browse by that, you can tap on subjects and choose the subject that you would like to look at. So we have those filters up at the top. As we make our way down the screen here, you're gonna come across a section that is uh, labeled guides. Now guides do differ from library to library. So this is one of the changes you'll see from my collection here to yours. Um, each library gets to choose which guides they display. Your library has uh, a youth guide, a teens guide, a magazines guide, which makes it really easy to find your magazines, and then a mystery thriller guide, likely because that's the most popular subject slash genre at your library, so they want to give you a quick, easy way to find it. Now, these guides just point you in the direction of content based on that criteria. So, in the case of teens, if I pop into this teens guide, I'll see curated collections with um, YA content. So those guides are also a great place to start, but we can continue making our way down the screen here. And this is where you're going to see general curated collections that your library puts together for you. Never judge a book by its movie. So this is gonna be a collection of books that have a film adaptation. And this is a lot like if you were to walk into the physical library in the summer, and there's an end cap that's displaying beach reads. 
But when you go back in the winter, that end cap switches over to cozy mysteries or holiday recipe guides. So these curated collections that you're going to see on the library page when you're browsing are going to change throughout the year. The library is going to constantly be rotating them so that they can show you something fresh and new. <clears throat> so like I said, the library is where you go when you want to browse everything. Ebooks, audiobooks, and magazines, you're going to find it all here. When you have a specific title that you're looking for, maybe you want to um, look for a certain author or, you know, a certain book, that's when you can go to search instead. It's the very first icon that you see in the navigation bar. It looks like a little magnifying glass there. And here is where you can search for something specific. So at the library, we browse, but on the magnifying glass, we search for something specific. I'm gonna type in a title, but again, you can do author. You could also do a magazine or series name as well. And just like Joe, I skip over the search suggestions generally and just go down to search or enter in my devices keyboard because generally that book you're looking for is gonna pop right up at the top, just like it did here. So I see the plot here at the top. Now, this is what a uh, search results is gonna look like. This is also what it's gonna look like if you pop into a list or a filter. And there's two things that I wanna point out here on this page. The first is how you can tell the difference between an ebook and an audiobook um, visually. So I do want to mention that libraries purchase those formats separately. That means they buy ebooks and they buy audiobooks. And so you can't borrow an ebook and then change it over into an audiobook or vice versa. You have to borrow it in the format that you'd like to read or listen to it in. So when you're looking for an audiobook, you're gonna see a square jacket cover. Kind of looks like a CD case. I know that's a little outdated, but an easy way to keep it straight in your mind. And then right below that, you'll see a set of headphones and the duration of the audiobook. So how long you're gonna be listening. When you're looking for an ebook, one that you read with your eyes, that's gonna be a rectangular jacket cover. So it's more like the shape of a book rather than the shape of a CD. So that is how you can tell the difference just by those three visual indicators of the shape and that icon and duration that it is the difference between an ebook and an audiobook. The other thing I wanted to point out here is the difference between books that are available to borrow right away, they're available now or books that have a waiting list. So you can see the audiobook version here. It does say place hold right next to that jacket cover. And that means there's someone reading every copy or listening rather to every copy that the library owns. And placing a hold is quite easy actually. All you have to do is tap on place hold here you'll be taken to the confirmation page. And Libby does even give you an approximation of how long that title is going to take to get to you. And then there's this big maroon button that confirms that we want to place the hold. You'll just tap on that. And we have placed our hold. Now, when you place a hold, Libby's going to ask what you want to do next. We have four options here. And generally, if I'm joining wait lists and placing holds, that means I haven't found the book that I want to borrow right now. So keep browsing is what I'm going to do. And this is going to pop me right back to the same list that I was looking at. So you can see we're back in those search results for the plot. And now I want to walk through the borrowing process. So if it says borrow next to that jacket cover instead of place hold, that means it's available now. And you could tap on borrow here. 
if you want to borrow that book. If you don't know what the book is about yet, you can tap on the jacket cover itself. And that will take you to the details page. So you get to find out what that book is about. I'm going to mute for one second because I need to clear my throat and I don't want to do it in your ears. All right, when I took that drink of water, I swallowed it the wrong way. And I was like, oh boy, okay. So we'll, re we'll see what that book is about. If we decide we do want to go ahead and borrow it, we can tap on borrow here on this page as well. So that's what I'll go ahead and do. I'll tap on borrow. And now we're on the borrowing confirmation page. So up at the top here, you can see we're borrowing the plot for 21 days. 21 days is the default lending period at your library. And library books in Libby return automatically on their due date. So you never have to worry about late fees or manually returning it. Libby takes care of that for you. When you're ready, we have that big maroon button again and that will confirm that we want to borrow the book. And this is when Libby will start downloading the title for offline use. So you can see this uh, circle that's filling up. <clears throat> that is Libby downloading the title to your device. Libby does this automatically when you're on Wi-Fi. And as soon as you get this little library card with the check mark on it, that is when you know your book is downloaded and you can take it anywhere, regardless of if you have cell phone service or Wi-Fi. You can go up in a plane on airplane mode, out in the middle of the woods, and you'll still be able to read or listen to your book. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tap on open book here. And this is going to give me the option of reading my book in the Libby app, or sending the book over to a Kindle device to read it there. So if you have a Kindle that you prefer to read on, like a Paperwhite, for example, you can select Kindle here. Libby will prompt you to sign into your Amazon account and finish getting the book there. It's a really simple, easy process, but because Libby requires me to sign into my Amazon account, I don't do that live here for you but I do have a video in that PDF that you're gonna to receive tomorrow that shows you the full steps for delivering to Kindle. So if you wanna see that, uh, don't worry, you still can. I am here live gonna go ahead and tap on Libby and we'll open the book here directly in the Libby app. So up at the top and the bottom of the screen, you'll see I have some menus displayed and Libby's counting our pages here, but when she's done, we'll see our reading progress right here on this bubble. So I'm on page one of 354. When you wanna begin reading, you have to drop those menus out of the way. And that is just a quick tap of the finger or click if you're on um, LibbyApp.com, you'll just tap, and those will drop off the screen. And then you can page forward by tapping or swiping or clicking on the right side of the screen. Now I'm moving a little fast because I just want to get to a big chunk of text there. And I want to show you how you can customize your reading appearance to meet your own individual needs. This is one of the best things about reading digitally. What I love so much is it, it really allows every book to be a large print book or um, various ways to adjust to you know, meet your own individual needs. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on the center of the screen. And then up in the top right-hand corner, you'll see that A icon. That A stands for appearance. So anytime you wanna change your appearance, go ahead and tap on that. Now with the, within the appearance menu, there are three things that you can adjust. 
The first is your text scale. So this is gonna be the size and the font. You can use this slider here to increase your font size or decrease it. You also have the ability to change the lighting. I'm currently in bright mode, that's Libby's default, but we have a sepia and then a dark mode as well, which is really great at night. It makes it a little easier on your eyes. And then last but not least, we have book design. Now book design is just Libby's fancy way of saying font style. So these are the different font styles that you can put your books into. I like to point out this open dyslexic font style here because it may help some users with dyslexia while reading. So I'm gonna just put that back to my default here before I close this menu. But the three things you can change in your appearance, again, are the text scale, the, so the size of the font, the background color of the page, and then the font style. So um, you really can customize that ebook to suit yourself. I'm just gonna tap above that menu. That's gonna drop it off the screen. And then let's go ahead and we'll leave this ebook and we're going to pop into an audiobook, show you a couple things there. So I'm going to tap on the center of the screen. That brings our menus back up. And this back button is how you'll leave ebooks, audiobooks, and magazines. It'll always be right up top in that left hand corner. Anytime you're ready to leave a book, you just tap on back, and there you go. So I am now on the shelf, and this is where I go ahead and reorient everyone down in that navigation bar. So let's head down to the bottom of the screen here. The first thing I'm going to point out is this now reading bar that you see on the right side. This is Libby's way of giving you easy access to the very last book that you had open in the app. So anytime you see that, you can tap on it. It's going to open your book right back up. I'm going to dismiss this for now so that we can see that full navigation bar. And let's go ahead and review what we've covered already before we move forward. So the first thing we did was visit the library. We tapped on this library icon, and that's where we had the filters up at the top, we had the guides, and then we had those curated collections that changed throughout the year. And I know I say it a lot, but I'm just gonna repeat it. The library is where we go to browse. We don't know exactly what we're looking for there. We're just kind of seeing if something sparks our interest. Right next door, we have the magnifying glass. That's what we tapped on next. And that is where we searched for something specific, SSS, search for something specific. So here you can do a title, an author, a magazine or series name if you really wanna find something fast that you um, are interested in. We're now over on the shelf. That is the fourth icon that you see in the navigation bar. It looks like a little stack of books and it says shelf underneath. And the shelf is where you're gonna go when you want to see all of your loans and holds that you currently have. So your loans are gonna be the books that you're actively within your lending period for in Libby. So you borrowed them from the library and you're reading them right now or your holds that you're currently waiting on the wait list for. So up at the top of our shelf, you can see I have some filters. I could look specifically at my loans or my holds. Tags are something I talk about in the deep dive if you wanna hear about those. But here on just the main page of the shelf are all of my loans and they're organized by the last time I opened them. So here's that book I just borrowed with you showing right up at the top. And then as I make my way down the screen here, we can see some magazines and eBooks that I have borrowed as well. And my audiobook. So biography lover, 
Um, this is a good one. If you haven't read it yet, I'm going to go ahead and open up that audiobook from my shelf. Up at the top of the audiobook, we have our progress. So I'm 1% of the way through here, three minutes in with six hours left to go. We have a little speedometer here if you want to uh, increase the playback speed, so speed up or slow down that narrator. We also have a sleep timer. This is the crescent moon that you see here, and this will pause your audiobook at a given time. So we have some presets. End of chapter is a really popular one here at my house. As I fall asleep, I don't want to lose my place, um, or you have a fine tune as well. I wanted to point those features out because I know we had a few audiobook lovers in our entry poll. Now, down at the bottom, we have the player. So when you're ready to begin listening, you can tap on play. That will start the narrator. Now, I can hear him over on my end, that sweet voice of Matthew McConaughey. I love that he narrates this book himself. Um, but you should just be able to hear me. <laughs> so um, you'll see that play button has now turned into a pause button. And one important note I want to make here is that Libby is designed to play audiobooks in the background of your device. And what that means is you can come into Libby, open up your audiobook and tap on play. And then you can minimize the Libby app and start online shopping. You could put your screen to sleep on your device and start gardening or doing dishes. And Libby will continue to let you listen to that audiobook so that you can multitask. Now, with that in mind, what I want you to remember is when you're done listening for the time being to come back into the app and tap on pause. That's gonna stop the narrator from talking and then you're not going to lose your place. There's been a time or two I was on the bookmobile and I saw people just turn their volume down. And they think, well, if I can't hear it, then it's not playing anymore. And that's not true. So go ahead, come in, tap on pause, and then you're not going to have to search for where you last listened to. I just like to give that warning there. Okay, so... You probably remember, but we're going to um, leave this audiobook. And I said you'll find that back button up in the top left hand corner of all the different formats ebooks, audiobooks, and magazines. You'll see that took me right back over to my shelf. And now I'm going to reorient you again here. So let's go down to the bottom of the screen. You'll notice that my now reading bar has switched over to green lights. And that's because it's always the very last book that you have open in the Libby app. So I'll go ahead, I'll dismiss that again. And um, I'm going to reiterate that your shelf is your current loans and holds. So you're actively within your lending period or you're actively on the holds list on your shelf. Right next door where you see timeline, that's the little clock there. This is your history. So this is going to be everything that you've ever placed on hold, everything you've ever loaned out. It'll also be your returns and renewals as well. So I want to make the, um, the distinction here that your shelf is current. You can pull those books off the shelf because you're in your lending period and read them whereas your timeline is your history. It's covering everything you've ever done in the Libby app. The very last icon that we have left in the navigation bar is the menu. That's what we're gonna finish off the getting started presentation talking about. Your menu is the uh, in the center, like I said, it's that three lines and it says menu. Your menu is your app settings, if you want to think about it like that. It's kind of where you manage your account. And up at the top, you'll notice I have a notification. It's letting me know that my library added a magazine, uh, a new issue of a magazine 
um, to their collection. So I love the Rolling Stones. They're letting me know there's a new issue available. This is an in-app notification. And I'm going to talk about what that means here in a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm swiping to the left. You can see that notification is going away. And now Libby's prompting me to manage my notifications. Libby brings this menu to you the very first time you place a hold. So even though I'm getting slightly complicated here by dismissing my notification and coming into this menu, Libby is going to bring it right to you the very first time you place a hold. Notifications are how you are alerted about important events that happen in the Libby app. Up at the top here is this blue notification line. And by default, everyone is going to be set to that blue notification option. That is a push notification. Push notifications appear on your device's screen regardless of what app you have open, like a text message would, for example. So we could be looking at Libby, but we could also be browsing Facebook or reading the news. And if an alert comes in, that notification is going to show up on our screen no matter what. If you'd like, you can switch some of those over to a menu badge. That is an in-app notification. And we just saw what that looked like. So I swiped it to the left. It was that box up at the top of the menu. And I say in-app notification because you have to open up Libby to see it. It's not gonna appear when you're browsing Facebook or reading the news. You have to open up Libby. Of course, if there's an option and you don't need a notification for it, then you can just ignore it. Now, right below the three ways you can be notified are all of the things you can be notified about. My dog's getting a little crazy with her bone there. I'm sorry if you can hear it. And the one I wanna talk about is hold ready. So this hold ready notification, I really recommend that you keep that on that blue push notification option. That option where you see the notification no matter what, and the reason I recommend that is because when it's your turn on a wait list, Libby is going to give you three days to take action. And the, in that three days, that book is just sitting in limbo. You're the only person who's going to be able to take action on it. In the three days, your three options are to borrow the hold, to cancel the hold, or to have the hold delivered later. Maybe you're not going to have time to read that book and you want to stay at the top of the wait list. You can deliver the book later and that will keep you in the top and people will just skip over you in line until the date that you chose to have it delivered later. So you hit that three day limbo period. If you don't borrow, cancel, or deliver the hold later in that three days, Libby will automatically deliver the title later one time as a courtesy. So the book will go to the next person in line and then come back to you. You'll get a second three-day period where that book is in limbo. If the second three-day period you fail to take action again, that's when Libby cancels your hold. So you'll have to go find the book again and rejoin the wait list. And I know this is a hill I'm willing to die on because it is a day ruiner if I wait five weeks and then I have to wait another five weeks because I didn't take action. So I like to give you that warning. I really recommend keep that hold ready notification set to that push notification option so you don't miss that alert. Okay, I'm gonna move on from that. I won't lecture you too much about it and I'm gonna go ahead and hit back here. This is just gonna take us back to the main menu. And underneath that notification, you'll see your libraries listed out. So we just added that Carmel Clay public library card. You also see I have two demo library cards here as well. So I have three different collections that I can browse and borrow. You can add 
as many libraries as you'd like to Libby, as long as you have a valid library card and that library uses overdrive services. So this varies state to state. I don't know the intricacies of Indiana's uh, library card sharing, but here in Ohio, for example, Joe and I have access to our um, city library, our county library, and then our state library as well. So that's three collections that we can add to the Libby app. You can also add additional cards from the same library if you have multiple people in your family who want to share a device, but you don't want to fight over the loan or hold limit, then that is an option for you as well. We're going to finish off underneath help and support. So first, I'm going to take you into the settings here, that third option. This is where you can find uh, that copy to another device code that Joe talked about at the beginning of the presentation. You can also find accessibility features in here as well. But I'm gonna scroll down here to nearly the bottom where it says customize navigation. So I've talked about that navigation bar a lot throughout the presentation. And you'll see that underneath my icons, I have labels. And that's because I have my labeled icons toggled on. By default, Libby has those toggled off. And so I just like to show you how to come in here, turn those labels on, because when you're just getting used to the app for the first time, it does make it a little easier knowing where you need to go if you can't remember what those icons mean. So I, again, have a video in the PDF that outlines these steps, 30 second video. If you're like, I remember everything else she said, but I really need to turn those labeled icons on, you can watch that 30 second video and you'll be good to go. I'm gonna tap on back here. And I'm going to do this twice because first it's taking me to the settings and then back again takes me back to that main Libby menu. And lastly, under help and support, we'll talk about getting some help. So you have Joe and I for the next 45 minutes. Ask any questions that you have. There are no stupid questions in the Q&A and we will answer those for you. You also can always ask your local librarians. They're, um, quite helpful as well if you ever need help with the Libby app. Or you can find help and support directly in the Libby app. There's two different ways to do it. So I'm gonna tap on help and support. And the first way is going to be asking Libby, the computer, for a, a question or for a topic. So let's say I wanna learn how to return a title early. I finished it before it's due date, and I see there's someone waiting in line. I want to get it to them faster. So I'm going to type in return. I could do a full question. I'm just going to do a keyword here and then tap on search. Now, Libby, the computer, is searching through her help site and trying to find articles that are relevant to that word. So we can see returning books is uh, what I was looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that. And Libby's showing me that help article. So I can see to return a book manually, I can follow these steps. So that's the first way that you can find help and support in the Libby app. You're asking the computer. If you're not finding the answer you're looking for, or maybe you have a deeper uh, issue, maybe you found a bug, maybe your book won't open, you can always come down to ask our support team. And this is gonna connect you with real life living and breathing people. They're a super friendly group of folks, I promise. And you can say you have a question, a problem or an idea, and that will connect you with technical support specialists at Overdrive. They are Libby experts more than Joe and I are even. And that's saying a lot because I talk about Libby all day, every day. And this will be via email. So double check your email when you submit your question. A typo is gonna send it right back to us when we give you the answer. And you will get your um, problems or questions answered and resolved. So 
That is the second way you can find help in the Libby app. And that is the last thing I'll talk about there in getting started. So I'm going to give my voice a break here and hand things back over to Joe to get us into our next steps. Awesome, thanks Marissa. Yes, so give that voice a break. We're gonna need you in a little bit. But for now, some next steps for everyone. Remember, keep asking us questions. You can send those through using the button that says Q&A, type out your question, we'll get you an answer. We are now going to go into our five minute break here. This is also when we'll give our mini quiz. So feel free to stick around, test your knowledge with us. But if you need to get up, stretch, get some water or coffee, you can do that now. We'll just ask that you are back by, let's say 10.55, give you a few extra minutes on that. <clears throat> so during that time, we'll once again, feel free to take that break or we will quiz you on what you just learned. Um, but most importantly, at 10.55, we're going to head into our deep dive session. So this session is where we'll cover kind of the cherry on top of the Sunday, some really great ways to enhance your experience. Um, but we only recommend sticking around for the deep dive if you are feeling confident and ready to learn more Libby info today. Remember, we are recording and you'll get that recording tomorrow, which will include everything we talk about. So stick around for the mini quiz. Let that be your kind of benchmark. If after the quiz you go, you know, I've taken in all I can for today, I am done. No worries, I have a last call before we go into the deep dive. You can decide then if you want to hop off and end your time with us today there. Uh, we just don't want anyone to leave feeling overwhelmed and we know everyone learns at a different pace and there is a lot of wonderful things uh, presented today to learn about in Libby. So just keep in mind, if you are walking away from your computer at 10.55, we'll head into our deep dive or thereabouts. And if you're up in the air, if you want to stick around for it or watch in your own time, just remember, I'll give you a last call before we go in. All right. So, sorry, let me flip forward. There we go. Now we are going to go into that mini quiz. These questions are going to appear on your screen automatically. Uh, they are completely anonymous. Just give us your best answer. If you don't know, feel free to guess or choose unsure. All right, so for question number one, in the navigation bar, bar, what do you tap to browse your library's collection? Magnifying glass, library, menu, stack of books, or clock? So browse is our keyword here. Where are we going to browse around? Right, and I will close this one in five, four, three, two, and one. All right, excellent work, everyone. So uh, everyone who answered got it correct. When you want to browse your library's collection of eBooks, audiobooks, and more, you'll tap on that library building. Just like we go to the library to look for a new book, that's how we find our, you know, our digital stuff. So you can use the filters, you can use the guides, or you could dive into any of these curated lists. These are made by your librarians in the same way that they make the different displays and end caps in the physical library. Now, when you know something specific, you know exactly what you're looking for, tap on that magnifying glass and you can search for a title, author, series name, name of a magazine, it's a really great way when you know exactly what you're hunting down. For question number two, we'll still be in that navigation bar. What do you tap to find your current loans and holds? So same answers as before, magnifying glass, library, menu, stack of books, or clock. Current loans and holds, where do those live? And remember, if you're not sure, feel free to still choose that unsure option. Or give it your best guess. And I'll close this question in five, four, three, two, 
one. All right. So when you want to see all the books you currently have borrowed or you're currently on the hold list for, you need to go to your shelf. To get there, we'll tap on that stack of books icon. Up at the top on the shelf page, we have some filters so we could see just our loans or just our olds. We'll talk about tags in the deep dive. And if we scroll down on the shelf, we'll see everything we're currently borrowing from the most recent to the oldest. If you have any holds that are available to borrow right now, Libby's actually going to put those on the top of the shelf so you don't miss it. All right, let's dive into an ebook. What are the three ways you can customize your ebook's appearance? So select all that apply. You can change the text scale or the size of the font. You can change the lighting or the background color of the page. You can change the book design or the font the book is written in or you can change the language, the language of the book. So three out of four of these are correct. Select all that apply. And I'll close this one in five, four, three, two, one. All right, excellent work on all of these questions, everyone. So when we are ready to adjust the appearance in an ebook, we'll tap in the center of the screen, tap on that A icon, and that will open up the appearance menu. First thing we can change is we can adjust the text scale, make it as large or as small as we like. Then we can change the lighting or that background color, bright is your default. And then last, we can change the book design, which is the font the book is written in. So that includes the publisher's default and four other pre-made fonts. But there's also a custom option where you can even adjust things like the spacing between lines of text. Now, while you can't change the language the book is written in once you're borrowing it, your library may offer titles in a variety of different languages. And Marissa is going to show us some tips and tricks and how we can make sure we're always borrowing the books that we want to read or in the languages we can read in. And with that, we are right at our time here. So I am just going to give everyone that last call I promised. So if you are all done for today, if you want to review the tips and tricks in your own time, once you get that email tomorrow, feel free to exit now, you can tap leave in the bottom right hand corner of the screen and that will let you exit the webinar. Thank you so much for joining us today and for learning the basics of Libby. We're so excited you could join us. For those of you who are continuing, we're just going to give everyone a moment here if they are choosing to exit or not. Once again, thank you all for joining us. And it looks like our numbers are slowed back down again, so I will continue us on. So for those of you who are sticking around, just a quick reminder, closed captions are of course enabled, and you can adjust those using the box that says CC in your Zoom meeting controls. You can also ask us questions anytime, just like I said before. Uh, this time we'll do it a little differently. Uh, so still send through those questions, just know that I might not answer your question right away. I might mark it to answer live. So Marissa is going to take us through our four tips and tricks. And then after we're done, we'll have about five or so minutes left at the end where we'll uh, answer any of those questions I marked for live uh, right on the screen in the webinar uh, directly in the Libby app. So we didn't forget about you. We might just be saving it to the end to share with everyone. All right, so the four things we'll be talking about today, we're going to start with magazines, what makes them special and some ways to navigate through. Then we'll go into filtering and refining lists to help you find the books you like faster. Then we'll talk tags, what they are, how we use them and some ways you can enjoy them as well. Then we'll wrap up with making and exporting notes and highlights. Great for those of you who said you're in book club or if you just like to make notes while you're reading. And with that, Marissa, I'll let you take back over on the screen here. And thank you all for sticking around. All right, thank you, Joe. Uh, I'm just gonna get connected here. Let me rearrange my screen again now that I got reconnected. There we go. 
And we're going to dive right into our tips and tricks. So um, Joe went over our first tip is going to be magazines. So what makes them special and then how we can navigate throughout them. Now, we did um, already talk about how to find magazines in getting started. We you could search for something specific in the search icon. Or when you're at the library, those guides, you do have a magazine guide that makes them really easy to find as well. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a magazine that I have borrowed already here in the Libby app, this issue of Popular Mechanics. Now, there are two things that make magazines special when you compare them to ebooks and audiobooks. The first thing is that there are no waiting lists, so you never have to place a hold. Magazines are always available. The second thing is that they do not count against your loan limit. So you can borrow um, 10 ebooks and audiobooks before you have to return a book to borrow a new one, right? Magazines do not count within that number. So you could reach your 10 ebook audiobook limit and then you could still continue borrowing magazines uh, without any issue. So those are the two things that make ebooks and audiobooks special. And one second here, I think my dog might need to go to the bathroom. So I'm gonna uh, message my husband and make him come get her. <laughs> She's a whining. All right. So let's go ahead and open up that magazine. She usually sleeps the whole webinar. She's lively today. So up at the top and the bottom of the screen, you see that we have some menus here. So these um, menus are just like the ebooks and audio or the ebooks. You can tap in the center to make them go away. We see that our reading progress here, we are on page one of uh, 94, but we have the this extra thing down here in magazines, which are these thumbnails of each individual page. Now, you certainly can use these thumbnails to navigate throughout the magazine. If you wanna jump to that page, you can tap on any of them to do that. I typically see younger kids doing this because their eyes are still perfect. <laughs> um, I'm aging and so I can hardly see what these do anymore. So I don't use these, but again, you're welcome to if you can see those perfectly fine. I'll show you a few other ways to navigate as well. So I'm gonna tap on the center here, drop those out of the way and then that second way to navigate is just by tapping or swiping on the right side of the screen to page forward. Now, the third way to navigate is by using the table of contents. So I've just swiped or tapped until I found the table of contents. And here are all the articles that are on that front jacket uh, listed out. And these are all links. So I can tap on any of these to jump to the specific article if I want to. Let's go ahead, how to build a chicken coop in the backyard. I'm now on page 52. So that's the third way that you can navigate is by jumping to a specific article. Now this here is, um, I call it the traditional magazine view. And if you're on a larger device, like a computer or an iPad Pro, those things are massive, like spaceships, then you can likely see it just fine without any trouble. I'm on an iPad mini, so this is a little small for me here. And so if you have, um, you know, a problem like that because you have a smaller device, what you can do is come down to the very bottom of the page. You'll see the circle with the little um, page inside. This is the article view. So when you tap on that icon, the article is going to populate into this menu that has pictures um, and text. So you're not missing anything by coming in here. You'll still get all those pictures but 
that text can be customized to be a little bit bigger for you. You'll notice down at the bottom of the screen here on the right hand side that A icon. So we remember from ebooks that A icon will customize your reading appearance. You can make your font larger, you could change that background color. Now, if you've already customized your reading appearance in an ebook, then your magazines are going to follow suit. So, this is actually what I choose my ebooks to be in. Libby knows that my magazine should be in that same size font as well. Down on the left hand side, we see these arrows pointing forward and backward. We also have uh, that little table of contents icon in the center. So if we hit the forward button, we're going to stay in the article view. So it's really nice. We don't have to close this menu, turn the page, open the menu. We're just paging forward by staying in that article view here. Back is just gonna take you back an article. And in the very center, where that table of contents button is, you can skip to a specific article. So again, this is staying in the article view. Let's say I want to look um, at this article on what happens when black holes collide. Libby has taken me over and I'm again, staying in that customized article view with that font that I can actually read without straining my eyes. Now, when you're done reading the magazine, if you're in the article view, first you'll have to tap on done in the very bottom on the right hand side. That will take you back to the just the traditional magazine view. And if you're in this view and you're done, you tap on the center of the screen, quick tap and then you'll have that back button. So you can exit that magazine and go back to your shelf. So that was tip number one, all about magazines, how to um, navigate throughout them and what makes them special. We're now gonna move into tip number two, which is all about finding the books that you like faster. So we talked about the two general ways you can find books. You can browse at the library or you can search for something specific with that magnifying glass. But let's go ahead and talk about how you can uh, really narrow your search down so you can find what you're, you really want to read and you can do that quickly. So I'm gonna go over, let's on the library page, hop into this available now filter. We can see there's 81,000 books within this filter. So I could be looking all day, which I've done before, and that is a good, good time, way to pass the time. But let's say we're in a hurry and we wanna find something quick. The first thing I wanna show you is setting a preference. That's over on the left-hand side of the screen in this dark blue bar here. And what preferences are, are filters that are saved in Libby. So when I say saved, that means you can open and close the Libby app a million times, and Libby is going to remember those filters as your preferences. Now, the most popular preferences that I see people place on their devices uh, first would be language. So for example, I only speak English, much to my high school French teacher's dismay. I didn't retain any of that. And so when I'm looking for a book, I don't wanna come across books that are written in Japanese or Chinese or Spanish or French. I'm not gonna be able to read them. So I want Libby to only show me the books at the library in their digital collection that are written in English. They're the only ones I'm gonna be able to read. Some other popular ones are format. If you have a specific format that you prefer, Perhaps you like audiobooks. You don't want to be reading. It hurts your eyes. You don't, you're not interested in magazines. You only want to listen to books. 
you can set an audiobook preference and Libby will then only show you audiobooks. You won't have to sort through all of the ebooks or magazines. And you can do that for any of the formats here if you have a preference for a certain format. I like them all, so I'm gonna keep them there. The last one I'll talk about here is audience. So right now I'm seeing everything from juvenile content all the way up to mature content. I point this one out, this, um, this preference out for anyone who might have kiddos at home, grandkids that come over, they have their own device and you wanna make sure they're not you know, coming across 50 shades of gray. You could set a juvenile and or a YA preference and that's gonna make sure they're only seeing age appropriate content. They're not gonna come across that mature content when they're searching or browsing. So when you set these preferences, you'll have to scroll down just a tiny bit here and tap on apply. If you don't tap on apply, they won't be saved. And you'll see a number pop up next to your preferences button. This will change depending on how many preferences you set. I set one, I set my English preference. Now, every time I search or browse for a book, Libby will only show me books that are written in English or spoken in English for audiobooks. And again, these are saved. So no matter how many times I open and close the Libby app or, you know, I cannot open Libby for a month and then come back, Libby's going to remember that I have an English preference. Now let's talk about temporary filters. So in specific instances, you might want to set a filter, but you don't want Libby to save that filter. You want it to revert back to the default the next time you look for a book. That's when you're going to use the refine button instead. So preferences are saved. Refining is temporary. And let's give a little prompt for our refining. Let's show you how quickly you can narrow down this list. Let's pretend my mom and I are going to go on a road trip and I need an audiobook for us to listen to on our way. So I'm going to look for a book in the audiobook format. My mom likes mystery historical fiction. So that's the subject that we're going to look for. And then um, she reads a lot. So let's go for a new release because the likelihood of her reading it before is lessened. So let's hop into refine here. And the first filter I'll place is the format. So I want an audiobook. We see this list has already started narrowing down. We've started at 81,000, I'm now down to 22,000. But I'm gonna come back to refine because we still have some filters to add. She likes mystery historical fiction. So I'm gonna come to subject and choose mystery. 2,900, we're making our way there. We're really getting it narrowed down, but I need a second subject because my mom doesn't just like mysteries. She likes mystery historical fiction. So I'm going to tap on historical fiction here. And you'll see that number drop down to 222. Now you might be thinking if we added a second subject, wouldn't that number grow instead of decrease? And that is not the case because what we're seeing is a list of books that are both historical fiction and mystery at the same time. It's not a list of historical fiction books and mystery books. They are both. And I just show you this so you know you can find niche subjects if you'd like. Between two to four subject filters combined are, is that's the sweet spot. If you get any more than that, Libby's going to be like, there's not a book in the world that exists that's seven different genres at once. So two to four is generally that sweet spot there. I have one more piece of criteria here to me. I want to refine this one more time and we're going to sort our list because right now it's sorted by popularity. 
But like I said, I want a new release because my mom reads so much. So I'm going to instead sort this list by release date. And that's going to make it so the newest books show up at the top of the list. And then as I make my way down that list, they're going to get older and older. And that is how you can filter and refine your searches so that you can find the books that you like faster. We started out with 81,000 titles and have narrowed a list down to 222. So that was tip number two. We're now going to move into tip number three, and this is all about tags. Tags are Joe and I's favorite feature of the Libby app. Tags are how you can create lists in Libby. This is one of the differences between the OverDrive app and the Libby app. So if you've used the OverDrive app before, you know that you have a history and you have a wish list. But in Libby, you have the tagging system and you can create as many tags as you'd like and you can name those tags whatever you'd like. So it's a really robust system. I like this system because you can, again, name them whatever you like, and that really gives you a lot of freedom with your tags. So instead of just tagging books that are on my to be read list, I also tag books that I want to gift to my father-in-law. He is a big reader and books are pretty much the only gift that I've ever given him that doesn't just like collect dust in a closet. And so I really am constantly challenged, always trying to find books for, to give to him. And so what I've started doing is when throughout the year, when I'm looking for books for myself in the Libby app and I come across a history book that I know he's going to love, I tag it. And then when Christmas rolls around, I open that tag up and I already have a list made of the books that I could buy him. And it really saves me a lot of time. And so I just use that as an example to show you that you can use tags however you'd like. You're not limited to what we want you to use them for. So you can use them in any way you want to. So let's go ahead and we're, first we're gonna tag a book. Then I'm gonna show you where those tag lists live in Libby. And then I'll show you how you could export those tags out of the Libby app. If you wanted to share your tag list with a friend or print your tag list out, you can do that as well. So let's say I'm looking through this list of my mom and I's um, road trip books that I could borrow. I come across the Apollo murders and that's just too scary for my mom. She doesn't want to read that, but I kind of like a little dark uh, mystery here. So what I'm going to do is save it for later. I'm going to come down to tag. And when I tap tag, I can create a new list or I can tap any of the tags that I've already created if I want to add it to one of those. And there are two types of tags in Libby. Regular tags are tags that you create, name yourself to state organized. So here you can see I have a to be read tag. I also have a cooking tag. Smart tags, on the other hand, are tags that Libby creates. And these have special abilities. So the first tag here, that's the borrowed smart tag. It looks like a little receipt. It's a red receipt. And that tag will automatically apply to any books that you borrow in Libby. I'm going to show you here in a minute why that comes in handy. I'll also show you how to delete it if you don't want Libby auto tagging your books. The second one here is the notify me tag. This tag is currently specific to magazines and we actually got a sneak peek of what this tag does in our getting started session. So what happens is your notify me tag is specific to magazines. The very first time you borrow a magazine, Libby will prompt you to create it. And then you can start tagging all of your favorite magazines and Libby will then notify you every time a new issue of that magazine is added to the library. 
So we saw that earlier in my notifications, I had a new issue of Rolling Stone that was added to the library. That way I could borrow it and read it. So smart tags are um, Libby's tags with special abilities, and then regular tags are tags you create um, to stay organized. I'm gonna show you how to create a new tag. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna tap new tag, and then we can name this tag whatever we'd like. Um, you aren't limited to that. I'm just gonna tag it with creepy. So then when I'm in a spooky mood, I'll go ahead and I'll pop into my creepy tag and I'll choose a book from that list. I could add a description. I know what this means, so I won't, but you always have that option. And then you could tap done or go doesn't matter which, and that will add your tag to that book. So now here we can see my creepy tag has shown up right next to that jacket cover of the Apollo murders. Now, this is one of the reasons I love tags so much because it really helps when you're searching and browsing for books. I'm gonna show you here why. Let's say I'm scrolling through this list for my mom and I's road trip. Doesn't look like any of my tags are showing up. That's strange. So let me just quickly pretend. Let's say I'm scrolling through this list and I come across that borrowed smart tag. So this means I've borrowed the book in Libby before. And if you're someone who reads a lot, then sometimes the title of the book or the jacket cover is not enough for you to remember if you've read it or not. Now we can see, I borrowed this book before, I've read it before, I don't need to listen to the first 20 minutes, I don't need to read the first 50 pages before that memory sparks again. I know that book has been borrowed. That will work for any of your tags, whether they're smart or not. So we could see if stuff was on our wish list or anything like that. Now let's go ahead and look at where these lists live. So we know how to tag books now. I'm going to go over to my shelf. These are where my loans and holds live. And that's also where our tag lists live as well. So here I'm going to tap on tag. And I can see I have my wish list. It has 42 titles. I can see the new tag I just created with my one title in there. And I'm gonna just pop into my wish list. Let's tap on that tag. And now we can see all 42 of those titles that I've tagged to, uh, to be read. Over on the right side of the screen here, you'll see we have a bunch of we have calendar with a clock or a library card with a plus sign. These two icons are indicating this book is on a waiting list. This book is available to borrow. If you tap on them, it doesn't matter if it's a library card or a calendar. You're going to get a little menu here and you can either borrow or place a hold if it's that calendar directly from this screen. But more importantly, I wanted to show you down at the bottom here, we have all of the libraries listed out and it shows you the availability of those titles across your library. So I actually have three libraries. One doesn't own this book at all. One has a six week waiting list and one has a copy available to borrow right away. So I wanted to show you that so you know that you can compare your books across all of your libraries if you add multiple library cards. These icons do appear on your shelf like I'm showing you now in my tags. They also appear at the library on that library icon and in your search. Okay, so at the top of the page in the corner here, we have an actions button. This will allow you to rename your tag or delete it if you wanna delete that smart tag that automatically tags your borrowed books and you can export your tag. 
exporting is taking that list out of the app and you can share it or print it out. So there are a few different file types depending on what you want to do with it. You can export to a web page, that's the HTML option. You can export to a CSV file, that's going to be um, offline use. So if you want to view it offline, I would choose that one. But just for the example, let's go with table. Now I'm on the data export page. You can see all my books down here at the bottom. And if I want to share this list, I'm going to go up to the top in this right hand corner where the share icon is. Now I want to make a note that this share buttons location will depend on what web browser you're using. So I'm on an iPad, I'm using Safari, it's up at the top. If you're using Firefox or Google Chrome or um, Internet Explorer, it might change the location, but just know you're looking for that square with the arrow. And once you tap on that, you can send your list in a text message, you could send it in an email, or if you scroll down, you can also print that list out as well if you wanted a physical copy. So that is tip number three, how to create tags as lists, how to share them, and um, what makes them so great. I could talk about tags all day long, very type A. I love to be organized, but I'm going to stop myself there. And we'll move on to our last tip of the day before we get into questions, and that is notes and highlights. This is going to be big for the person who indicated they were in book club. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a copy here of Pride and Prejudice. You can make notes and highlights in um, on a full passage, a single word, a full page if you want to. But the key is to start at the very beginning of the passage you would like to make a highlight on. I'm going to do this first paragraph here. And I'm moving my mouse slightly to the left so that you can see what happens when I use my finger to hold on the screen where it says stir. I'm keeping my finger on the screen. Uh, if you tap, it's going to turn blue. So as soon as your finger, or if you tap, it's going to turn the page. But if you keep your finger where it turns blue and then start dragging your finger across the screen until the full passage is blue, then you can lift your finger up off the screen. And that's going to bring up the menu down at the bottom there. You can highlight using any of the different colors here to stay organized. I'm going to go pink, feeling like pink today. And now my highlight is placed. If you want to add a note to your highlight, what you can do is tap on the highlight and your note will drop down. So we could type anything here. I've done full paragraphs before, but just for the sake of um, demonstration, let's do, this is a note, a nice quick one. And then I'm just gonna tap below that menu and it drops off the screen. Now I'm gonna page forward, so tap, tap, tap. And let's say I want to reference a highlight that I've made earlier in the book. What I'm going to do is tap on the center of the screen to bring my menus up. And then up in the top right hand corner, there's three bookmarks sitting there in a row. This is the icon you're going to look for. When you tap on that icon, you'll have all of your notes and highlights appear in this list. Let's say I want to reference this highlight about Mr. Bingley in chapter three. What I'm going to do is tap on it, and Libby's going to take me right back to that page. So I can see um, this is the one I actually tapped on down at the bottom of the page. If I want to view the note, I just have to tap on that highlight. And just like we saw when we were adding the note, the note just drops right down. 
If I want to drop it off the screen, tap in the center. Now, this is how you can find your notes and highlights if you're still inside the book. We, we're in our lending period. I have it borrowed from the library and so I can open it up from my shelf. Let's say you borrowed a book, made your notes and highlights in it, and then it returned to the library on its due date, and now there's a waiting list. So you can't borrow it again right now. You'll still be able to access your notes and highlights in that instance. And let me show you how. I'm going to tap in the center of the screen here and leave this book. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the details page of the book that I'm looking for my notes and highlights. And we showed you how to do that in getting started, but let's refresh. I know exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to search instead of browse. I'm going to type in the name of the title. And again, I like to hit search instead of use the search results. Here's another reason I love that smart tag. I see that I've read this or borrowed this book. So I know that that's the book that I'm looking for. I'm going to tap on the jacket cover to view the details page. Now, when you're on the details page of a book that you've borrowed in Libby, you'll have a reading journey that appears. And you can tap on your reading journey to see all of the actions that you've ever taken with that book. Up at the top in the right hand corner, you'll have an actions button. This will allow you to export your reading data. So following the same steps I showed you for exporting your tag, you could export your notes and highlights for emailing, messaging, or printing. If that's just like a little too far, you're like, I just wanted to reference one quick note that I made, you can come down on this page, just scroll down until you see the timeline for the title and your highlights will be listed out by percentage. And you could just tap on each of your individual highlights here, which will show you the, the highlight is gonna be up at the top. And then in quotations underneath is going to be the note that you made with that highlight. So two different ways that you can access your notes and highlights, even if the title has returned on the due date. And that is tip number four, how to make notes and highlights in an ebook. I'm going to go ahead and hand things back over to Joe, and he's going to get us into our Q&A. All right, so we didn't have any questions come through, but if you have any questions now, Russ and I will uh, save a few minutes here and uh, feel free to just send those our way. If we don't see anything pop up in the next minute or two, we'll, uh, we'll get things ended. Oh, Marissa, great one right away. Is there a way to search for coming soon books? So we're gonna head over to our magnifying glass to search. And this is where you're going to find that advanced search option. So when we tap into the search bar, we can actually use this explore with filters. And then if we tap on more, this is kind of that advanced search option. So we can go to availability and tap on where it says whatever's there for us. It says everything and you can choose coming soon. If you tap on coming soon and then scroll down a little bit, depending on your device size, you can hit search. And since we've got a blank search bar, this is going to show us everything that is coming soon. So these are all of the upcoming titles. I do want to give a little asterisk by that. Um, some libraries turn that feature off. So not all libraries allow you to search by coming soon. Some libraries don't pre, pre you know, buy pre-release pre content. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, a great caveat to give there, Marissa. Oh, this only works if your library does pre-order titles and if they offer uh, the ability to search by them. Great question.
Um, just a quick reminder while we wait and see if there are any other questions that come through. Um, if you ever have a question while you're using Libby, remember you can always reach out to our tech support team directly. Just go to the menu and then under help and support, tap on get some help. From here, you can use the search bar up at the top to type in a keyword or a short phrase. Maybe you had a question about your tags. You know, Marissa, love, you know, Marissa and I love tags and she gave a wonderful example of, you know, how we use tags. But if you type that in and hit search, you're going to get some suggestions that pop up. So some different article names. Um, if you see something here that looks, for, uh, looks like what you're looking for, uh, maybe if you hadn't listened to what are tags with us, that might help you. But since you probably have something a little more uh, in depth than that, if you don't see what you're looking for up here, you can always tap on where it says ask our support team. And this is going to take you to the page that lets you reach out to them directly via email. Uh, you can choose from there either a problem, a question, or an idea. So if you were having an issue with your tags, you'd pick a, pro uh, a problem. If you just had a general question or wanted a little more info, I'd go with question. And then of course, if you had a suggestion for how tags could be changed uh, in the Libby app or uh, an addition to them, you could submit an idea. So just a reminder that that is always available to you and they are happy to help 24 seven. All right, well, it doesn't look like we have any other questions coming through. So just wanted to take a moment to thank you all for joining us for our Learning Libby with the Experts webinar and truly meeting Libby today, coming with your questions and uh, finding out all sorts of fun ways that you can enjoy your library's digital collection. Remember, you'll get that email tomorrow morning from Zoom that includes a link to our full webinar recording, as well as a link to our Getting Started with Libby PDF that includes short video clips of everything Marissa covered in the basics part of the morning. You will have uh, the access to that recording for the next six months, uh, so feel free to make the most of it in that time. You can also download the recording if you'd like to keep it permanently. Feel free to share this with family and friends, anyone who you think would benefit from meeting Libby. So with all of that said, I think we are all done for our morning here. So thank you all so much for joining us today and happy, happy reading. reading.